This episode is brought to you by Dragon Ball Legends, the ultimate Dragon Ball experience on your mobile device. Dragon Ball Legends features action-packed anime action RPG gameplay with Goku, Vegeta, Trunks, and all your favorite Dragon Ball characters. Summon your favorite characters from popular Dragon Ball anime series, such as Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball GT to Dragon Ball Super. Fight in real time against friendly or rival Dragon Ball players from across the globe in live PvP battles. Enter ratings matches with your favorite Dragon Ball characters and earn rating points and rewards. Unite with friends to defeat powerful foes in co-op. Dragon Ball Legends features the best anime fighting scenes on your mobile device. And now, Legends Festival is on, so you can get up to 300 free summon tickets. Are you ready? Download Dragon Ball Legends today. Available for free on both iOS and Android devices. He's like, so wait, so he got his kids back at the end? Or he got, and he's like, no, he got new kids, different kids. And he's like, oh, well, that's still, oh. still pretty good. That wouldn't matter to someone, right? If your whole family died, you'd still I'd really just hope. consider your lived experience to be a bad one, right? And he's like, no, no, because Job had double the kids. Oh, like numerically? Yeah, numerically. So it's all fine. It's volume. It's all about volume. Yes. Quantity, not quality is what Job was looking <laughs> for in children. Yes. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because the people demand it. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Field trip. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Once again. Went to the theater. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Oh, movie theater all by myself. Yeah, I eventually had one of those to myself, too. (laughs) So tell us, Heath. What will we be breaking down today? We watched The Shift. I don't know why it's called that. I'm going to work. I guess we'll try to figure it out. It was like because he shifts because he, he shifts. shifts. What are you talking he about? He shifts realities. That's a <laughs> yeah, shift he shifts in, from dimension to quantum dimension. shifts. OK, yes. I know this is a good comedy, but I'm like, no, that's very obvious why it's called The Shift. <laughs> God. Let me know your joke for hi. Welcome to the podcast, new listener. Where we just I don't think that's the best word to describe insults. what they're doing there. They're, they're in the they middle. Do, they literally call it shifting, quantum they call it leaping, shifting. or there's and shifters, and, shifters. Yeah. Uh, we, Keith will not be in the second and third parts of this podcast because I will have strangled him over this fight. I thought it was just like a pain in the ass job to have to watch this movie, so it was a shift. <laughs> oh, that's certainly true. Yeah, fair. Well, it's the story of a drunk guy who makes bar bets that involve literally carrying out war crimes against innocent people to resolve the bet. That guy is God, by the way. It's a Christian movie Mm -hmm. about that. It's about the story of Job. Yes. Which is a bad pick. Is it, though? I mean... It's sort of, but it's also not. Yeah, it's so not. Like it, I'll say this: if Job was owned by Disney, they wouldn't get a copyright strike against this <laughs> film. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved Tenant, but you hated its lack of Samwise Gamgee and sci-fi Satan. You will love this movie. I am percolating with rage that you have compared this movie to the masterpiece that is Tenet in any way. Also, you think it's Tenet like somebody who has yeah, well, a right. lease yeah, the whole- on an apartment. I am not more sure of anything in the world than I am sure that some Christians saw... It was stupid what you said just now. is fucking dumb. <laughs> I love it. See, this is the new vibe, everybody. <laughs> Episode four, three, two, <laughs> countdown to the apocalypse. <laughs> but I am, I've never been more sure that a Christian saw that movie and was like, okay, got it. Just scary cops and confusing. That's yeah, the movie. Yeah, got no, it. No, you're right. You're right. So, all right. I'll, I'll forgive the uh, comparison for that. Uh, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, yeah, so many things, but I guess I'll go with best worst helmets. <laughs> for the, short, for the <laughs> like future police or the like quantum shift 
police in Satan. one of their universes uh, or several yeah. of their universes. It's just a giant, like, full, you can't see their face. They look like a bug or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And it's like with the, it's with the reflector, like the douchebag sunglasses. It's all that for the face of the cop. Yeah. No, it's funny because like in movies, usually helmets are either, you know, really cool looking, but wildly impractical or practical. This manages to be like the worst of both worlds. Yeah. They were very clearly like, you know what they'll probably have in the future? Full face helmets. <laughs> I guess. So and I was going to go with best worst Milk toast Satan. So Satan in this movie might as well be going around and like leaving salt shakers almost screwed in, but not <laughs> quite right. Like that's the kind of yes. shit with like this Satan, classic prank. He can't even kill somebody in this movie. Like they they almost have him kill somebody, but then we see that guy getting loaded into the ambulance. I guess because this movie couldn't. Yes. Handle it. Hold on. Is that a Satan character? The benefactor is supposed to be yes. Satan. Oh, obviously. Yes. That's uh -huh. Satan. Yeah. Okay. I'm joking this time. I obviously, feel like he Satan. didn't see the movie. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's the story of Job. I'm fully aware. Okay. Yeah. I mean, spoiler, I don't know. You didn't know why it was called The yeah, Shift, Keith. We're, <laughs> we're in the wild west of things you do and don't know on this episode. We're it's falling bad, apart. Bad word choice. There's so many words that are a lot more descriptive of what they're trying to go after there. <laughs> this is tearing us apart. We're four minutes into the record. We're never going to make it. Yeah, I mean, not to spoil anything from this movie, but at the peak of this movie, Satan will need a gun and it'll be like, shit, I need a guy who has a gun. Satan, yes. Satan. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to go with, speaking of things he summons, I'm going to go with best, best, Sean Astin. Oh my so, God. Much to our chagrin and heartbreak, Sean Astin, Samwise Gamgee, is a Christian. As far as we know, he's not super homophobic. He's never been in one of the really terrible ones. Oh, uh, terrible content wise, but never mm -hmm. one of the ones that are like, kill all your neighbor's dogs or whatever. He just seems to love Jesus a little too much. And I'm guessing they gave him like a buy one, get one free movie contract, which is how he ends up in this movie because he could not be more out of place in this dark, gritty sci fi yeah. reboot of Joe. Oh, uh, yeah. No, that's two Goonies in a row, folks. We got a Corey Feldman last week. We got Sean Est. I was trying to find a Martha Plimpton movie we could do next week, but uh, but I was overruled on that. But yeah, he's the only like serious name actor in this whole thing, right? Well, Neil McDonough playing Satan is, is, is like he's recognizable, at least. Yeah, I went. I, 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 it's the guy. Yeah. It's Alton Brown. But like Sean Astin, I actually like know his name. I could name other movies right. he's in for sure. Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not so much. I feel <laughs> okay. Sean Astin is eating a food at every single moment in yes, this movie. Yes, he is. Yeah, that is, <laughs> yes, that is, is. Right, right. And he was like, I'll be eating the whole time. You can shoot me if you want with a camera. I literally said it later in my notes. I think he only agreed to do scenes that began with a food that was handed to him, right? Well, so no, I, I actually went the other way with this because I was wondering, was it that or was it just this dumbass director going, well, your character's fat. He'd probably be eating right now again, huh? <laughs> it's probably that too. It was one of those two things, yeah. I think it was a beautiful meeting of the minds, right? He was like, you're fat. You want food. And he was like, I mean, this is a terrible experience. So yeah, if you want to make me a <laughs> turkey and cheese sandwich. Right. Mm -hmm. Look, it's not going to ruin my performance of these <laughs> lines. So yeah, I'll eat a big sloppy falafel. <laughs> All right. Well, in honor of this movie, I feel like we should pad the episode's runtime a bit. So we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back in a minute with all the blunderous storytelling of The Shift. Hi, I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm Heath Enright. With the holidays just around the corner, we want to talk to just our lady listeners. That's right, lady listeners, because you're in danger of holiday hallmark syndrome. That's right. Every year, more than 2 million competent big city businesswomen are swept into a whirlwind romance and marriage during the holiday season. But now there's hope, and it's from Raycon. Yeah, you've heard us talk about Raycon before. I know illusions have tried and loved their wireless earbuds. But this past year, they expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon PowerTech and Raycon Home. And those products can keep you safe from holiday hallmark syndrome. Keep your phone charged with their Magic 180 charging cable, which provides hyperspeed charging to iOS, micro USB, and Type-C devices 
rotates 180 degrees and is built for durability. So you never have to stop at a rustic farmhouse to ask for directions. Or try a set of fantastic noise reduction headphones to make sure you don't hear your mother casually mention that your high school flame is now a widow running a used bookstore on his own. Hurry to buyraycon.com slash gam to get 15% off your entire Raycon order. Perfect for last minute gifts or to ring in the new year. That's buyraycon.com slash gam to get 15% off Raycon products. Buyraycon.com slash gam. Raycon. Because if he's from your hometown, he probably voted for Trump. And then I said to her, well, I'm in the season of under the pants heages. Really? And what did she say? Oh, she said she was going to pray on it. Nice. Chris, Dave, stop what you're doing. Sure. What's up, Nick? Have you heard of Christopher Nolan? Um, Is that the guy who's dating Mike's cousin? Nope. Uh, I don't think so. He, no, he's a movie maker. My stepdad left one of his movies in the DVD player last night, and I watched it, and I was like, <sighs> it was so good. So good. Uh, okay. So what does that have to do with us, though? We should make a Christopher Nolan Christian movie. People will love it. Okay. I mean, what should it be about? Well, so that's the best part. It literally doesn't matter. You just make the movie confusing and everybody will be like, whoa, such a good movie. Um, I don't think Christopher Nolan's movies are like just confusing. No, trust me. They're just confusing. So stuff. All right. So, I, oh, oh, and we also, we need a bunch of dirty walls. Sorry, dirty walls? Cannot be a clean wall in the entire film. Okay. I mean, if you say so. So what were you guys up to? Chris's wife is considering an under-the-pants heej. Oh, nice. Right? And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on one of uh, many quotes from the book of Job we're going to get. This is my favorite, though. I, so, okay, so I don't know which version of the Bible that you were, you were using. It wasn't the NIV, and it wasn't the KGV. So I've got the KGV version of the quote, which is, I shit you not, naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. No, nope. okay, that's not. Um, <laughs> this was one of those times. It's good they did some edits on that book. I yes. guess <laughs> the perfect word of God. Uh, very, um, very ambiguous, right? There. Ashes to ashes, dust to my mom's vajuzel. Sorry, <laughs> what? I'm just. <laughs> no. I'm a biblical originalist <laughs> here at your grandmother's yes. funeral. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so but we get the job quote. We meet our main character Kevin as he's like in a lake. Right, swimming his way to shore. Yeah, I wanted him to be squooshing the rest of the movie, right? Like all yeah. the rest of the movie, he's just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he comes over in, in voiceover and tells us that he's never actually been in this lake before and he's never even been in this world before or something. Yeah, he says like, this is not my world. And <laughs> I just seen the quote too from Joe, but I was like, all right, I agree with this guy so far. I don't want to be in the movie either. Like, I get... <laughs> right. I get, right. like... You, Neither you, of us want to be here, man. Neither of us want to be here. Sounds like you realized you're in a bad Christian sci-fi movie and you're like, ah, oh, right, fine. Yeah. Oink, oink. All right. <laughs> trying to get back into my mom's womb is the noise <laughs> you guys are hearing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> the narrator's like, but whatever it takes, I will find my way back to her. And I'm like, oh, having the voiceover straight up announce the main character's motivation in the opening scene. Bold. <laughs> yeah. Masterful writing, guys. Mm -hmm. So then we get uh, we get our old timey computer screen credits. <laughs> and it's it's supposed to. So this is like a sci fi version of the story of Job that's going to have like multiverse type stuff. But then they mm -hmm. show us this screen and it's like whoever's running the simulation, I guess, God has a Commodore 64 level. Yeah, they're doing computer. it in DOS. They're doing it in DOS. Yeah, right. Yeah. Clearly. To run the multiverse. <laughs> it's so silly. But we get through the credits. We open proper on the housing market collapse in 2008. Our, our, our main character worked for Bear Stearns, so he's fucked. That's right, podcast listener. This movie would like to open with, you should really feel bad for a Bear Stearns investment <laughs> banker. Yes, yeah. you know, the real victims of the housing market collapse were. The employees. <laughs> I, look, let me be very clear. He's not like a janitor at Bear Stearns, no, right? Right. No, he's a trader. So, so 
He's in a bar trying to drown his sorrows in alcohol when suddenly a beautiful woman forces her way into the scene for a meet cute. Yeah. A manic pixie dream roast, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, wow, you look sad and pathetic. And he's like, that's bad flirting. He's like, she's like, well, this, this movie is written by this movie's writers. So what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> also, I'm an attractive woman and there's literally nothing an attractive woman could say when hitting on you that you wouldn't be like, adorable. <laughs> <laughs> My mom is a whore. That is true. That is a fun, that is a fun bomo. So do you work around here? Like that's crazy. We both came out of our mom naked. That's so true. That's so true. <laughs> but I would return to her flesh. I would go right back. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, oh my absolutely. god, we're so similar. we have so much in common. Eyes are big. <laughs> so uh, speaking of having something in common, I love this fucking exchange. Molly, that's the the woman. She goes, oh, you know, I don't like to drink alcohol. And then Kevin kind of pushes his beer away and goes, I also shouldn't drink alcohol. And I'm like, two very different statements, guys. Very <laughs> different. Yeah. He also has an AA coin. So we're supposed to, when she walks over, it's supposed to be like the moment she saved him mm -hmm. from going back to booze. Right. Yeah, exactly. And she does the like Annie Hall thing but not self-reflectively, right. right? She's like, oh, so tell me, we're going to go on a date and then another, and then we get married and have kids. And he's like, yes. And she's like, good, you passed my test. That is how this relationship <laughs> will go, correct? I had this amazing in-theater moment here at this point. So up until then, it was me and then there was these three other kids in the theater and they were too young and having too much fun to be actually intentionally watching this film, right? So I'm like, oh my God, this is the first time it's ever happened, but these guys are also here to ironically roast this fucking movie. Nice. Right? Obviously, yeah. But no, they weren't. At this point in the movie where she goes, you know, but by the fifth date, I would be trying to take you to my church. Would you even want to go to my church? One of them goes, my church? And they realized they were in the wrong fucking movie and they walked <laughs> out. No, awesome. children. <laughs> Don't abandon no illusions. Stay. Wow. I almost did the same thing as them. My note was like, okay, bye. Right after she said, yeah. we'll go to my church. I was like, All right, this character should leave. And I think I'm going to leave the theater. Yeah. You know what? The the cold open where you called me sad and pathetic, actually my thing. Your church, yep. the opposite of my thing. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go find someone secular to tell me what a sniveling worm I am. Thank you very much. Okay. Quick thing about the theater I was in. One other person with me and she was sitting front row all the way left. Otherwise, what? empty. The, I was so good. Like, what's happening in your Why life? Fuck you, stuff. She that, was that, doing that. that fuck stuff. You'd sit there Heath? by yourself. Yep. You got to hate yourself so bad. The best person. Like, you are, you're a cyclops and one eye <laughs> only comes. It's from the si right side. <laughs> I was alone in my theater and the guy in there was very clearly having a, I can't believe I work in a movie theater emotional crisis when I walked in. And I walked in and we both had the look of, Hey, you're either a religious fanatic or you're here to jerk off. Please don't jerk off in this movie theater. I am the one who will have to wipe your cum with a paper towel off the seats. <laughs> and I was like, praise the Lord. And he was like, you're not fooling me. You're not fucking religious. You're a Christian. <laughs> Just please do it into your popcorn bucket. This is all I ask. It's been God. such a tough then day. The trailer comes on that has a copy of Mind Kampf at the beginning and you lock <laughs> eyes with him. And he's like, oh, okay. He's like, okay. All right. I'll, get, I'll let you get started. That really happened. I was like, Jesus Christ. Okay, it ends up being a movie about a British spy, but don't do a cold open of your teaser with Mein Kampf. Mm -hmm. Weird. Mm -hmm. Fair. Important. Yeah. Especially in a Christian movie, because people are going to be like, okay, and then they're going to be disappointed. <laughs> Love that book. So, and then we flash forward a few years with another Job quote. This is Job 2.5. The one where Satan's like, oh, I bet he'll hate you if you fuck with him enough, right? Yeah. And we see that times sure are tough for Kevin these days because I think if we can all agree anything, it's that a lot of Bear Stearns traders had a really hard time getting back on their feet yeah. after oh, yeah. the housing yeah. market. I mean, if you have to ask me the number one person, people, group of people who were affected by the 2005 housing market crash, it's the Bear Stearns traders. Oh, sir. yeah, certainly. So, yeah, and we can tell life is miserable because his boss has a man bun. He's shorter than him. Yes, that's bad. <laughs> well, and is shorter than him. He's got a man bun. And then he says, he's like, you know, it's like my yoga instructor always says. And we're like, oh, OK, so we have permission to fully hate this character. OK, right. Yes, this guy's very hateable. He's Bear Stearns. Yes. And the boss is roasting him for that. But then 
<laughs> Kevin is his name, the main character, Job, basically. He's getting roasted by his boss. And he's like, yeah, cool. Got it. Yeah, I am a piece of shit. I'm going to start your click ball thing. And he like, yes, his little <laughs> Newton's cradle. I couldn't yeah. stop laughing. <laughs> I got in trouble with one lady front left. Yeah. He just gets the, starts taking all the pens out of his coffee cup and clicking them yeah. open, clicking them closed again. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So the boss is like, you're go home for the rest of the day and then come back in tomorrow and I'll yell at you some more. And he goes, all right. So he goes to leave. He's sitting in his car. He calls Molly and they're fighting about bills. And I love how lazily this fucking movie is written. They literally call them those bills. The writer could not even be bothered to think of a bill for the sake of his fucking script. <laughs> you know, the ones we owe money to. Yeah, the bills. And then, but as he's having this conversation, he's hit by a truck. I've, I've never seen a movie try so hard to wake grandma up, right? Yes. Also, like, we should point out this truck, spoiler alert, will never have any meaning to the movie. Nope. It is literally just that the author couldn't think of a way to transition to the movie he'd written mm -hmm. from the intro he'd written. So he was like, and abducted by aliens. Nope, <laughs> nope. Hit by a truck. Hit what by if a he truck. gets hit by a Segway scooter? That could be nice. Yeah. <laughs> hit by the nest scene. Somebody should do that. Oh, yeah. And so, but now, like the next scene, we see him waking up injured, lying behind a dumpster. Now, I should point out that up until this movie, that there's just been time cuts left and right. Nobody knows what the fuck is going on. So we don't know that we haven't just time jumped to another point for a while in this scene, right? But apparently, yeah. this is supposed to have happened immediately after. And Neil McDonough, Satan, is here, mm -hmm. and he's he's real slappy and unclear for someone who's introducing an opening satanic gambit. Like, throughout the beginning, first, like, third of this movie, the devil's like, slap, slap. Hey, how many marbles am I holding? It doesn't matter. What's your favorite flavor of jello? And he's just like, I, I feel like you really need, you need a calm and smooth approach throughout. He feels, <laughs> feels a little, when you're training salesmen, right? Like, he seems like he's got motor mouth a little bit, needs to take some, like, put the product in the hands training. <laughs> I think at one point it was like, punch, I'm here to help you. And the guy's yeah. Job is like, what? Literally was. Yep. Because you know what they say. If you come across a accident victim that's bleeding from like eight different places, he probably needs a good smack. <laughs> Wanted it to pan over to a line of people waiting to slap him led by yeah. Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> yeah, but Satan says, hey, look, I have a job for you. Let's go over to this restaurant. Job, Job, subtle. Uh, and in case you didn't get that, by the way, they're going to repeat that about 37 more times in this movie <laughs> and really drill it in for you. But he's like, yeah, let's let's go over here. And he's like, no, I'm going to call my wife on my cell phone. He's like, you're obviously in an afterlife hell city, dude. Duh. Come on. Your phone's not going to fucking work. I love that Satan is like, check your phone. Like Satan's doing a mentalist <laughs> <laughs> Which is a weird, was that your a weird angle for the Prince of Darkness to like establish himself? Just do evil magic. I also I have to point this out because it's just a funny moment. He's like, "I'm the benefactor," and Kevin's like, "Sorry, what? My ears are ringing." And he's like, "Kind of ruins my oeuvre if I have to go the benefactor <laughs> like the bene a little bit louder." Yeah. So. <laughs> Maybe you could just take a second and process what I said rather than me having to like tell grandma who the actors are on the TV. <laughs> I can't hear all of that that you just said now either. But just email the premise to me and then yes. uh, we'll both be all set. fact. Oh, God. The worst. Just starts doing devil horns on top of his head. Does this, you get... You benefit, huh? So, yeah. So Satan takes him to a restaurant to think things over. And he walks to this restaurant and very clearly like everybody knows him and is afraid of him. Right? Okay. <laughs> Can I ask, can we, can we crack this nut wide open and can I ask why? Like, I know he's the devil, but why is everybody like trembling with fear at this? I think a bunch of them are his victims. Like he's the devil and he's tormenting people besides just Job. I would have loved that, except they make it explicitly clear that he only comes after Kevin's. Yeah, no, they do. Only the name Kevin? Yes. Yeah, no, only only variants of that guy. Yeah. Oh, so of maybe that, that restaurant guy. is full of variants of Kevin? No. Just who, who all look different? Because there's a couple of spots where it's like some guy at the table when he first walks in is like, oh, shit, that's Satan and he's tormenting me. Like, fuck, I got it. 
so I think what we're supposed to get from this is that this character, like who is, because like everybody in this city is supposed to know him as the benefactor. I think we're right. supposed to get that like this character is prone to wild fits of temper and rage and it'll like, you know, rip your head off at a, at a moment's notice. But the movie is not, is too cowardly to actually show anything like that for their character. So we're supposed to just get that impression through how trembly everybody is. Oh, so Satan oh. just like goes into this restaurant a lot and does like the two for flinching thing and like everybody's kind right, of yeah. scared. Yeah, it's, like that, a, it's, a, okay. right. it's like a Tony Soprano thing. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Noah, because I, I was very confused by everyone's acting choices in this scene and the movie never explained them Not to at me. all, no. Yeah. I like the extras at the beginning of the restaurant scene too. Clearly it was like, hey, restaurant extras, just be like normal restaurant stuff. And they were like, whisper, whisper, whisper. Food is here. Food. <laughs> I like food to eat. <laughs> so, so Satan orders steak and eggs and a tall glass of milk. That's his usual. Truly a satanic order. Yeah, right. I didn't right. like the shade for steak and eggs. That's a good <laughs> dish. That's just a nice thing to get sometimes. It's a weird. No, that's a weird. That is what a hell demon orders. Right. With, with milk. It's a great thing like a hangover cure. I like a, a slice of apple pie and a bucket of popcorn. Like just normal. <laughs> that's a crazy <laughs> example. Again, who wouldn't want that? <laughs> so and for Kevin, the recovering alcoholic, he orders a beer. A beer. Yeah. Get it? Because he's the devil. <laughs> mm -hmm. So so they talk religion a bit, just so I know I'm in the right theater, I guess. And then they talk about Kevin's marital problems. The devil tells him the real important thing is good communication. And I'm like, oh, he's right, though. That is actually I mean, he's correct. Yeah, just, yeah. I know you're trying to do a metaphor <laughs> yeah. thing, but that's just true. He's like, you know, because without communication, everything falls apart. And he's like, no, yeah, no, I know. It's like, you gotta, you ever do like a set aside for a communication thing? Like <laughs> right it's, it's, it's like, you don't. Also, why are you about, talking that talk, way? Talk about God. God I'm damn it. talking normal. <laughs> <clears throat> and then the, the waitress, Tina, comes over to deliver the food. Now, fuck yeah, Tina. No small parts, Tina. Tina will become like by the end of this movie, this movie will seem to think that Tina was a main character all along. So put a pin in Tina here. <laughs> Tina's the fucking <laughs> MacGuffin of this film. Pretty I would much. Argue. Yes. At the, by the end of it. Yeah. She was a hero just for coming up to the Satan is explaining to this guy. He's like, I'm Satan, the Prince of Darkness. Mwahaha. And she like bartends right into it. She's like, so do you want any? Thing to yeah, drink. can I tell you guys about our specials tonight? <laughs> yeah. It's two for two, two tamales. Fucking yeah. So yeah, she but she delivers the the steak and eggs, and we watch him creepily. He like makes her sit down with them, and like feeds steak to her off of the knife. Yes, but it's look. Here's what's amazing about this take because you can see what happened, right? They did a sexy thing where he kind of like pushes it into her mouth and the director was like, that made my penis twitch. I need you to do it non-sexually. <laughs> Tina, you're going to be doing all of it. So the take that they kept and put in this movie is Tina reaching over like a cartoon squirrel <laughs> to take a <laughs> bite of this steak. And it's supposed to be this big, scary moment, but like, Robert, Robert, what is his name? Has been told, don't move your knife too much. It's, right. you know, you're making people's penises twitch. So she's just like, I, <laughs> I wanted so badly for him to take another bite. And he's in the middle of a monologue. And Tina takes another bite. <laughs> she's like, Sorry, I thought that was the thing. I, thought, I, just, I just, Keith lowers down into frame. So are we giving away free steak now? Yes. Like, what is the actual, does one have to wait to the offer? Order whatever you want for you, whatever. <laughs> so, but so Satan is explaining multiverse theory to Kevin in a way that's just very clearly like, you know, hey, kids, ah, Christianity has cool multiverses just like them superheroes do, you know. Now, to be fair, I will say at this point, the shift multiverse and the Marvel multiverse make the same amount of sense and are written as well as each other. Right? Okay. We can all agree okay. they're okay. all Ballpark. doing equally same. good jobs. No. All right. <laughs> Okay. This part didn't have a musical. That's all I'm saying. There wasn't a musical planet. That it, was nice. If it that was nice. Shifted into a musical universe, we would be talking differently. I liked I liked the one moment where Satan's like, Yeah, so I just keep switching stuff to fuck with you because I am always going to torment you. And then Job, Kevin, is like, Oh, that sucks. Uh, but prove your magic, because I'm not sure I believe you. And Satan's like, Okay, fine. 
and he does it. And Kevin's like, shit, really thought that was a bluff. Ah. Well, he says, he says, prove your magic. And he's like, oh, who do you want me to torment with my magic? And he's like, well, you know, the waitress is right there eating steak off your, your knife, I guess, Tina. And he's like, are you sure? We cut over. Tina's parents are like weeping openly a few feet away going like, oh, God. Everyone's shaking their heads with their eyes super wide. And he's like, yeah, no, show me your powers on Tina. Yes. Um, 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 I what love my steak and eggs. What the fuck is going on? And by the way, I, we, I don't want to miss this in the shuffle. The whole premise of this movie is that Satan's fucking with you by shifting realities ever so slightly. So like when your wife thinks you said something, but you're pretty sure you didn't, it's not that you guys are misremembering. It's that Satan has shifted a new version of your wife into this reality. <laughs> Right. This whole movie was built of a fucking shower fight that this guy won against his <laughs> wife using multiverse theory, using multiverse theory. Right. And I should also point out that I am now on wife. I would say seven hundred and ninety five <laughs> <laughs> remembered where she put her keys. <laughs> so He's running out of multiverse Annas that have known where their keys are. I promise. Even yes. the, you, <laughs> Infinity only goes so far as they say. <laughs> Satan got foiled by like the version history on Google Docs calendar. Yeah, right. And he's like, fuck, <laughs> all right, I have to just switch people in and out entirely. So, but now, but the key here though is that the reason why Satan wants to demonstrate his powers to Kevin is because he wants to recruit Kevin to be the fucking regional assistant Satan for the 12th district, right? So apparently every dimension has a multiverse version of Kevin that acts as Satan's you know, like man on the spot in that dimension. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to hire this Kevin to do it. Right. If he does it, he'll put him into a universe where he's like super rich and mm -hmm. is, his wife is like into anal, like not even just okay with it, but like into it. Like, right, right, exactly. <laughs> so, Quick question. Satan has this pretty serious power to like change the multiverse. How does he do that? Does he have like a special tool for that or does he just do it with regular Satan magic? Or, he's got uh, a deviator. Groovy steampunk watch that he wears. <laughs> deviator. I also just want to point out for the audience listening at home that Heath is avoiding saying the verb shifting because they say it 97,000 times in the film. They don't say it. I say it constantly. They do not say it even once in the entire movie. They call the, they call the characters the shifters, dude. The, like the, the, the people who have those things are called shifters. I bet you he never says it. I bet he's like, oh, this guy, he's a fucking moverator 3000. <laughs> Anyways, it, it is called the deviator. And I bet yep. they were very disappointed the first time they used it in this universe. They were, oh, a deviator. Oh, no, it just moves me universes. Oh, okay. well, damn, it's very well, subtle. I'll, I'll put my pants back on. But <laughs> you guys switched in a me who didn't hear shifter <laughs> into this. What the fuck is happening? That's what it is. Oh, that's what it is. If I'm Job, that tracks with a lot of stuff. Right, yeah. It no. does. Tra Honestly, That's if fair. you're Job and I'm the devil, this is all coming together <laughs> pretty well. So, yeah. So, but Kevin decides he doesn't want to be the regional assistant Satan. So he prays at Satan. Satan gets very angry and yelly, but prayer wins and Satan disappears. And I still wanted the credits to start rolling, but they didn't. No, they didn't. Instead, Kevin goes to leave the restaurant and he sees that now... But keep in mind, there were no people anywhere when they walked into the restaurant. Now there are these little discreet groups of angry protesters or whatever behind barricades. And there are silly helmeted riot cops that are going to now chase Kevin away. Yep, this is Heath's best worst. I also just want to flag that he left that restaurant without leaving a tip. Fuck you. Well, the waitress yeah. got bamped away into a hell to dimension. Be, yeah, to be so. fair, he'd probably leave a tip in her universe. That's the one time I think you're you're in the clear. <laughs> no, well, what no, if they pull tips? Share. Right, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Share, that's, yeah. fair. that's fair. Fucked the no, bus right. boy. Yeah, exactly. the bartender. Tip, you leave a tip there. You, you just <laughs> prayed to God and killed Satan. You're walking out, you leave a tip. Well, to be fair, Satan was buying, so he should all have to tip when he was being bamfed away. Right, but you bamped him away. No, I'm with Heath. That's I'm true. With no, Heath. no, 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 conceded, yeah. conceded. Job deserved everything that he got ever after that. <laughs> For not tipping, yeah. So then we, we Job quote our way to a five-year time jump, right? So he wakes up five years later he's in this shitty studio apartment in his hell dimension. A lazy combination of voiceover and newscast will do the exposition here. And you're just like, pick one, man. One or the other. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, oh, shit, I forgot to explain the post-apocalyptic world that I'm in now. It's um, 
So it's kind of like the apocalypse, but <laughs> but with my concept for the multiverse mixed <clears throat> in. Breaking news here. I'm going to interrupt you. I'm going to do breaking news to say the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That it's kind of like my version. Well, and I, I also love, so while he's listening to the news and we're getting exposition, he's like eating canned beans cold and he's typing on an old timey typewriter. But the newscasters, after they finish catching us up, they're like, oh, meanwhile, by the way, also there's a new thing called Vika theaters that's going to play into the movie. So we should probably plant that seed now. Just apropos of absolutely nothing. Hey, if y'all have ever seen a multiverse movie and you were wondering what the stupidest version of how do I get from <laughs> universe you to universe is, uh, head on down to your local Vikaverse. It is um, <laughs> so... it's a musical number from The Greatest Showman. You know what? We'll let you experience yourself. Just head on down. Yeah. Does it cost money? We don't fucking know. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. So, yeah. So, But what we learn about in all of this exposition is that after he prayed... Satan, the benefactor, who was like the king of this world, disappeared and hasn't been back since. And everything's been real shitty since he's gone. And everybody is out looking for, quote, the Kevin that refused. Think about writing the words, the Kevin that refused. <laughs> and no one in your life goes, hey, that's silly and stupid. Hey, are you starting a Dr. Seuss thing? You have to keep going and it has to rhyme now the whole time. Do you want to start? Do you want to come up with a better, cooler name? Enthused, amused, but like you don't have much after that, man. Let's see what you can do. I was going with Refusinator originally, but uh, that's actually better. Refusing. <laughs> Well, and then, of course, we have to learn his motivation, which once again, he just tells us via voiceover. When Satan disappeared, some people say all the secret shifters also disappeared, but he doesn't think that. So he's looking for a shifter so he can get their deviator. That's the silly steampunk watch so that he can get back to Molly. And I want to be clear because podcast listener, you're probably thinking, wait, who are the secret shifters? You haven't mentioned them. Why haven't you filled me in on the movie? No, no, no. This is where the movie tells us about the secret shifters. Yep. We are giving you information hot and fresh off the presses, we <laughs> promise. <laughs> right. Which is that Satan, who had the deviator, apparently had henchmen who also had the deviator, who shift away anyone who resists his rule? We, it is completely unclear who gets shifted away and why. And also, if he's already got these henchmen, why the fuck does he need Kevin as the assistant regional Satan? It makes no Very fucking confusing. sense. So okay. yeah, you should promote from within. That's just good right, business. Exactly. Right exactly. Promote a shifter that's already on the job. So, okay. So he, so he goes to work smashing bricks with a hammer, apparently. Yeah. Post-apocalyptic work, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of smashing with hammers. And this is where we meet Sean Astin. And he is magnificent. I should explain. Everyone, because it's post-apocalypse, everyone's all smudgy and post-apocalypse. Sean Astin looks like he just stepped out of an LL Bean catalog, right? Makeup came over and they were like, Sean, do you want us to give you a little smudge? And he was like, no, thanks. I'm going to be eating an entire meatball sub for the entirety of my introduction <laughs> well, scene. Yeah, because like I'll be eating this bowl of fettuccine Alfredo. <laughs> There's no need to put him a single dop of makeup on me. Thanks. Well, what's so fucking funny about this, too, is that like it's supposed to be this post apocalypse where everybody is starving. Sean, I asked him. Big boy, he's a big individual, and he's always going to have a fucking club sandwich at the ready at every moment in this Yes, movie. our main character has demonstrated the level of poverty of eating government beans out of a can. And in this first scene, Sean Astin is just gently carving a turkey with an electric turkey <laughs> carver. I was like, yeah, you know, they say the regurgitators came in the second fall of Bayama. <laughs> Are you a white meat guy or a dark meat guy? <laughs> you can't have any. I just want I'm to just, I'm just curious. I'm going, what this I'm is all for me. This I'm is for Sean. Eye contact with you. Yeah. Every time someone says Lord of the Rings, I get three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to throw peanut M and M's up in the air and catch them in my mouth. Oh, <laughs> hit my tooth. Hit my. Tooth I do full hard. bags. I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> oh, same thing. <laughs> so yeah. So but we learned that they have a. Uh, black market relationship he's like he was we saw him typing pages on a typewriter he's giving those pages to sean astin in exchange for information about the secret shifters and where they may have gone right right and what he is smuggling him is the absolute best because he is smuggling him his from memory recreation of the bible yes 
which I would say I would pay anything to read an average Christian attempting to recreate the Bible, right? <laughs> and, uh, look, because he's not a biblical scholar, right? He's a guy who got dragged to church by his wife occasionally, right? right. So 99% of Christians are going to be the words we see, and they're like, there was a big boat. In Don't ask follow-up questions. There was? <laughs> yeah. Mom's vagina. Shit. <laughs> All right, so it's, we, it's the next day. We, we get him leaving his apartment. There's a family moving in next door, and the dad of that family looks at him very suspiciously. All right, that'll come back. Pin in that. Mm. But we also, we, want, he, we watch him, like, walk around and give money to homeless people and, you know, help old ladies cross the street and do other various random acts of kindness. Yeah. yeah. He runs into a couple dancing to no music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's saying at that moment, like narrating, I look for glimmers of hope in society. And then he looks over and as if to say to us, yeah, glimmers of hope, like old people dancing in an alley next to a fire barrel. And he's like, oh, yes, <laughs> I like it here. Glimmers of hope. Yeah, nothing better. <laughs> so. He had just before that dealt with a beggar fence area. Yeah, yeah. there was like. A, like a kennel almost fence and then like oh, God, yes. people just sticking their fingers through the fence just a tiny bit and he's like here's a little tiny bread for you for like crumbs of bread right yeah yeah but that little weird moment ends with him once again talking with Sean Aston and we should also point out Sean Aston keeps accidentally saying his name right because everybody's looking for Kevin and every time he comes up Sean's like hey it's Kevin my friend hey, like, it's the Stop Kevin it. who refused everybody Norm yeah. <laughs> so, but when he says it this time, sus dad from earlier, the dad that was moving in next door that looks at him suspiciously, hears Sean Aston say it and looks at him even more suspiciously. Scants. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we all need a minute to weep for Sean Aston. So we're going to take another quick break, but we're back soon with even more of The Shift. Rudy. Rudy. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. And it is with great joy that I thank you once again for your generous, not generous, heartfelt gift. Hey, Eli, what you doing there? It's a little early for thank you cards, isn't it? Not for this one, because I'm sending this one to myself. Really? What gift did you give yourself? I really don't think we want to know the answer to that. Oh. No, no, Heath, the gift I gave myself was therapy. Therapy oh. as a gift for yourself? That's right. Therapy helps me correct bad habits, clear up bad thinking, and be kinder to myself all year round. Okay, that does sound nice. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So I could do therapy from home with a therapist that's right for me? That's right. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. All right. Well, I'm really happy for you. I love that you even got yourself an empty box. That's great. Wait, yeah. Heath, don't. Different gift for yourself in that one. Different gift. Wow. Different gift for me. Yes. <sighs> I'm going to lie down. You do that, buddy. <clears throat> you do that. Guys, guys. Hey, Eli. What's up? Yeah, and what's with the outfit? I got one. I got a deviator. The the multiverse shifting thing from this movie? Yeah, exactly. I went to a universe where I was a murderer and a universe where everyone was like poor and desperate. Oh, wow. That sounds terrible. I bet you're glad you made it home, huh? Mm hmm? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, super glad. What? Why are you still messing around with your deviator thing? Oh, um, I'm not. I'm, I'm actually just, I'm trying to figure out how to turn it off so that I can you, you know, no, just... No, no, you're not. You're trying to shift to a better universe, aren't you? He totally is doing that. Yes. What? No. no. I love it here. And my life is awesome. I would obviously not trade my life for anything. Sure? I am Because you're still very obviously typing, like right now. I just want to see what would have happened if I had taken a few tap lessons not there like there it is hurtful he gets to be olaf <laughs> <laughs> hey 
And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Kevin catching up with Sean Astin for some under the bridge fire pit lunch. <laughs> more <laughs> sandwiches for Sean Astin. Yeah. Okay. My first note in the scene, I was like, Rudy has a good sandwich. That looks like a really good sandwich. <laughs> yes. And then my next note is like, hold on. Did he get, a, he has a second really good sandwich, like a different one. Yeah. This was <laughs> did he have two different sandwiches? No, that was a continuity problem. I mean, he did, yes, but like the, it was supposed <laughs> to be the same sandwich because he like he starts eating this sandwich and then Kevin comes up and he's supposed to hand Kevin the unfinished sandwich, but Kevin was like, yeah. I'm not eating after Sean Aston. So he hands him an uneaten sandwich and then he hands it back and <laughs> Sean starts eating okay. it again. In my head, it also morphed from breakfast sandwich on an English muffin to turkey sandwich on regular bread. So like... I don't know if that actually happened or I was just hungry, but something crazy is <laughs> going on with Sean Astin and food. No, it's definitely a less nice sandwich when Kevin has it. Like that was I because at this point, my working theory was that like Sean Astin was like, hey, I read the script this morning on my way here and it's not a very good movie. So here's what I'll tell you. I'm going to order DoorDash every 30 minutes. <laughs> and if at any point I'm not eating a delicious little snack out, mm -hmm. I'm leaving and so oh, what they leave. just they just let him keep ordering while they shot the movie around the one day Are on you taking set. sandwiches out of your pocket do you have pocket <laughs> sandwiches <laughs> you well, have to tell they, us and he clearly had a rider in his fucking contract somewhere that said i get the best sandwich like if you give a sandwich to anyone else it has to be a, a clearly inferior sandwich you know how fight. vin diesel has to win every fight <laughs> has i have to, to win, win every, every sandwich fight. i have to win every <laughs> sandwich <laughs> <laughs> exactly so yeah, and there's this there's this amazing dialogue because he's like, so do you do you know anything new about the possible shifters? And Sean Astin says, literal quote, word is there's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking bad. But he explains it, that there's a new guy that might know something, and then he starts just like he he sort of steers the conversation into asking why it is that God isn't helping Kevin out more. Right. Yeah. He's he, he's representing three different characters in the Bible that are like, yes. hey, Job, you're getting fucked, man. Like now now it's boils, too. And all your money's gone. Like you keep praying. You should probably. Are you sure this isn't just Jewish or Christian him being or mad you at you? He seems mad at you. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, and we should also point out they, they don't have the guts to go with boils in this movie, but he does have a movie cough throughout this, right? So that's that's God taking his health as He's well. He's got a little band-aid on his forehead. That's the boil. Oh, right. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but yeah, but Sean's starting to wonder if there even really is a God, right? Because like, like he says, he's all three of Job's friends, right? So he gives all three of their arguments. But ultimately, he lands on... Kevin, you should go to the Vika theaters more. We've already talked about that three times in the movie. It's about time that pays off. Yes, exactly. And it does pay off, to be fair. This is one of my oh, favorite sure. parts of the movie is what? this facility. Just how silly it is. It's okay. so good. It is so ridiculously dumb. Yeah. So he goes to the Vika theater. We meet Russo, the theater owner. Now, apparently Russo lost his cat four years ago and still goes out and looks for it every day. And if you're not heavily invested in that fact, this movie is over for you. It has nothing to offer you. <laughs> it has no this, now, Russo luckily, and his cat and Tina. Those are the main yeah. characters of the Who? fucking movie. <laughs> now, luckily, no illusions, very invested in Russo's cat. He was oh, on yeah. edge for the rest of this film. I was. I'm not saying I wasn't. Yeah. And I, I was pretty invested in Tina, the, wait, the waitress, too. So like, all right. Oh, there you go. For the same reasons. Itty bitty feats. <laughs> what? <laughs> I like a Bigfoot. <laughs> Yog. So Kevin talks his way into the theater. Apparently, like, it's appointment only, but he's friends with Russo. So Russo decides, all right, we'll give you this one for free. It's appointment only. It appears to be for one person at a time, but yep. there are vagabonds living in the lobby. I, I have no idea why they never explain that at all. Yeah, it's got like a combo thing going on. It's like part porn area, right? Like a like a weird porn theater vibe to it, but part like crack house vibe to it yeah, also. Right. 
And then there's like an, an old timey movie theater at the end. Of the and then hallway. there's a sh- there's a scene from The Greatest Showman in the center of it. Yeah, and there's the, like he walks into the actual theater, and of course, I wrote a whole bunch of jokes about how hilariously impractical it would be to have a whole theater for one person. And then I looked around and I scratched all those jokes out. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In terms of impracticality, yes, definitely that. I have a couple other questions. Uh huh. Why a dental chair as the That's one great thing question. Great on. question why because there are actual theater chairs all yep. around they seem to have brought in the dental chair other chairs recline and are probably a little bit more comfortable than that sure why Possibly. a safety traffic lights in a circle around said dental That's a great chair. question the circle of light bulbs on the floor was my next mm-hmm. question yes what yep. did that do well and they're not they're not decorative right we could we, we find out later that they're like integral to the functioning of this entire device. Oh, yeah. Those are (laughs) load-bearing light bulbs (laughs) on the floor. They bear the plot, for sure. Yes. So, but Russo explains what's going on here to us, which it makes no fucking sense because Kevin's been here before. Why the fuck would he explain it to Kevin? But apparently the Vika Theater allows you to randomly look at yourself in other dimensions, not through your own eyes. Curiously, you're looking at yourself from a distance. In other dimensions. On a movie. <laughs> no fucking idea. But only at random. Yes. Like it it <laughs> it can do this and it has a an interesting third person perspective on your life, but you can't pick which time. It's just like brrr, boop. And then it lands on yes. one of your timelines. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Yeah. Right, exactly. So, and, and it's fucking hilarious because we're, what we're supposed to get from this is that in every other part of the multiverse, this guy, Kevin, is a bad guy. So everywhere he goes, it's him being bad, right? Like he's him beating up a guy, him drowning a guy, him doing push-ups in a prison, him in a strip club. But like, no matter how bad he is, he wouldn't always do be, like he would be like occasionally taking a shit or buying Sometimes groceries. he's got to sleep, right? <laughs> or eat <laughs> lunch. Something. <laughs> This guy just drowns people and fucks prostitutes 24-7. 24-7, as we will learn, 24-7. There should have been, they should have shown him looking at him, looking at him. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. yes. That would have been funny. Mirror in a mirror, yeah. And he just looks back and he's like, oh, that's the guy. All right. <laughs> oh, nice. Cool. That's me. So, and but then we get, we get a shot of Molly, right? In the middle of all the shots of him. He sees a shot of Molly and he gets up and he tries to like touch the screen. But if you step outside of the silly little light circle, she disappears. Right. So that doesn't work. That's called the dramatic tension light circle. <laughs> oh, OK. Interesting. Yeah, it's good that, good that they have that. But we learn from Russo that that shouldn't be even possible because he wasn't in the frame. He should only be able to see things that happen to him, not things that happen to Molly. And he's like, cool, Russo, will that ever be explained or have any meaning to the movie? No, no. I'm looking for my cat. Yeah. <laughs> At this moment, though, I was rooting so hard for the like the rest of that movie to eventually play. And he gets to watch some random lady walk in and just have delightful sex with Molly in this. Yeah, other right. uh, <laughs> spoiler alert, Keith. Spoiler yeah, alert. So we get pretty close to that. So then we, we Job quote our way to a bunch of riot cops holding a group of people back from a bridge. This never makes any sense. We, we never know why these people want to go across the bridge. We never know why these riot cops won't let them. We never understand why it is that the people wouldn't be like, well, obviously we can't go across that bridge, right? We, wh- why would they riot over it? None of it makes any sense. So, yeah, it does not make any sense at first. I have a theory about why they eventually do their little riot thing. So, like, the one old guy somehow decides, like, all right, I'm going to sneak through the line of police and run onto the bridge, right? Mm-hmm. And then they're about to shoot him like in the back as he's running across and then he vanishes, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And and at that point, <laughs> the entire crowd is apparently like, all right, well, that guy clearly quantum leaps to an alternate universe. Murder! Everybody race for the warp zone. And then they all run right, for, yeah. I think, what they all clearly believe is like, oh, well, there's the warp zone. It's right there. Yeah, right. It's right, right there. Yeah. We just all got to run to that about halfway across the bridge. But we never really understand why he gets... Shifted. I can notice that Heath wasn't using the word shifted. Why he gets shifted or where he gets shifted <laughs> or where he to. Get, yeah, right, right. And and let's keep in mind that up until this point, being shifted is like the worst thing that can happen to you. Like when that was going to happen to Tina, the entire restaurant was gasping with fear. And now everybody's like, shifted! Hoorah! <laughs> Woo! 
me next, me next, me next, yeah. me next. <laughs> no fucking idea. I mean, if you're in this universe, it's a pretty good odds, right? Like, I feel like better than 50-50, something better happens. You would think. At least I'm going to be like taking a shit or like, you know, drowning somebody. Yeah, exactly. Doing prison push-ups. Yeah, right. right. Not in the weird smudgy gray land. Right, but the riot cops open fire and they start dropping gas grenades and Kevin is tempted to give them a piece of his mind. But luckily for him, Sean Aston grabs him and pulls him away uh, so that he can run away. And then there's this great transition because they're hiding from the riot cops. The riot cops are gone for like one second and immediately Sean's going, you know, I don't think there is a God, actually. <laughs> I didn't mean to tell you, I have some questions about the Kalam cosmological <laughs> argument. I think it might be a category error, man. Yeah, I don't think you can start with my thing is the only thing in a category and then define all other things based mm -hmm, on it. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then but Kevin's like, no, no, it totally makes sense that God doesn't help me more because Satan said when I was praying him away that he'd keep fucking with me and he ends continuing to fuck with me. And Sean's like, right, but if God's omnipotent and he's like, Shh, no, no, no. <laughs> so then we cut to Kevin. He's at a line at a pharmacy movie coughing yeah right and he notices that some the lady up front her kid sort of wanders off and the mom doesn't notice okay i laughed at this moment too because he, he he's all freaked out about that he sees the kid walk away he goes up to the mom and he's like hello ma'am you don't know me it's really easy to steal a child i don't know if you know that and she's like your child is extra stealable what? right now i thought it was my job to tell you <laughs> Well, she even says, I'm sorry, is that a threat? Or I don't even know. And he's like, no, not. It's no. not. It's an anti-threat. It's the opposite of that. The threats are all around us, is what yeah. I'm saying to <laughs> you. Because I love you. Fuck, this was dumb. Parachute. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Different races. <laughs> right. But what we ultimately learn here is that his son, him and Molly's son, they were at a grocery store and their kid wandered off and then disappeared and they never saw him again. Thank you, The Shift. This is what happens if I ever take my eyes off my son in a public place. <laughs> a normal and chill thought that I am not working with several professionals to banish from my brain. <laughs> they will get you, Eli. Yeah, and by the way, we're eventually going to learn that like the kid wasn't kidnapped. Satan just shifted him into another dimension. No, no, he died. Because later, later he's like, shift my kid back and we've got a deal. And he's like, ah, it's, nah, he's in heaven because some guy fucked him to death. So Right, but he also <laughs> makes it very clear that he shifted him out. So like that, that's not mutually exclusive. Okay, Ooh. did I hallucinate something extra too in this moment? Because yeah, the sun's gone. We get the flashback. The parents are all freaked out about it. But then we see cops show up at the door and hand them a basket like a picnic basket and it, i was no, like is that son's back. the dead it's kids their, in the fucking their basket son's back. <laughs> it's, the kids it's their backpack. son's backpack yeah. <laughs> why did they put it in a picnic basket though th it they, wasn't first of in all, a picnic it basket. was not in a picnic basket I hallucinated you were needed a full backpack. psychosis yes <laughs> you guys are shifting me into shit <laughs> twice now i had shifted from a universe where the cops brought an edible arrangement to the door <laughs> No, honestly, though, if this movie was released with ever so slight variations in like 30 different scenes in every different like market that's it was released, in, that would be brilliant. And that's Wouldn't clearly so what's smart. happened. We have the yeah, data. Now. Obviously, no, I don't, Angel I don't Studios is really correct. wasting that, uh, <laughs> that sound of freedom. Money. I actually emailed about him. I'm going to check my email, see if they said anything yeah. back. And this is where we get the movie's attempt at at a merch slash logo. Yeah. Right? So we see... You don't mean the dead kid in the picnic basket. You mean something no, else. It's not. It's after the dead kid in the picnic basket. Yeah. He gives her this necklace and the camera focuses in on way too long because it's definitely for sale. Mm -hmm. And it is... It's supposed to be an empty tomb, but it's boobs. <laughs> and inside the boobs, it says, he lives. Which, look, I understand for Angel Studios is a... Empty tomb, God's not dead, he's very alive, whatever. But when you give that gift to your wife, whose son has just gone missing, it has very different connotations. Well, and the movie leans into that, right? Like the conflict between him and his wife seems to be that his wife couldn't forgive him for thinking that the kid was still alive, right? Yeah. Like that was the central conflict. And then he's like, no, no, I even have an our kid is still alive necklace for you. I had a you're killing our kid in our mind 
jewelry made for you. <laughs> Cus- custom, <laughs> apparently. Or it's boobs. Or I bought it from Angel Studios. <laughs> yeah. 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 But then at this point, this is where he hits rock bottom, right? We, we cut back to the present out of that flashback. And we get him like rooting through a garbage can looking for alcohol, which against all odds, he finds. He finds a drink in the trash can he's looking for it through. Yeah, he's starving to death, but people are throwing out half bottles of bourbon. It's a very weird economy that's going yeah. on here. Yeah. But just as he's about to drink his garbage can booze, the dad that had been looking at him so suspiciously earlier comes by. And he's like, hey, you want to come to my place and eat some food that didn't come out of a fucking trash can? And he's like, sure. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, absolutely. So they go to that guy's place with his wife and his two kids. They have their meal and he goes to leave. But as he does, the mom, the wife gets up and locks the door. But like very aggressive move. Yeah. Right. But they, but but he's inside. The door locks from the inside, right? That's <laughs> nothing. You just turn the the handle and the lock now. It would take him an extra second or so. He would sure. have to fiddle. Look, if you guys have better ways to suggest a threesome in front of your twin eight-year-old daughters, I'm open to hearing them. But I thought she was making herself perfectly clear. And then we get the funniest moment in the whole fucking movie, if you ask me. So he's like, wait, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, well, we we know who you are. We know that you're the Kevin that refused. And he's like, we still haven't come up with a better, and like, still haven't come up with a better name for that. Like, and, and he's like, oh, are you going to turn me in? And they go, quite the contrary. Girls, come sing him your song, but do it quietly. And then we watch these two little girls whisper, sing, I'm going to let it shine clearly <laughs> against their will. Right? Neither of them wants of anything to do with this. I laughed so loud and so long at that. Yeah, I had a good time. I had a really good time. <laughs> and Kevin cries at this rendition. Yeah, Kevin falls to his joy. knees yes. Yes. and weeps with joy. And and uh, the dad is like, hey, can you tell our kids a Bible story? And he's like, right, yeah, in case the symbolism was too subtle to this point, I could tell him the story of Job. <laughs> yes. Well, not just that. I want What a terrible story to choose to tell children. Yeah. Right? I wanted the flash cut to the dad being like, yeah, so that's why we're not Christian anymore, because I, I can't imagine <laughs> a book. <laughs> yes, for one random like story. It is kind of funny how he's leaving out all the parts that make it super obvious what a douche God is in the story. God is the clear bad guy in the story oh, of Job. Yes. Just objectively. Entirely. He, he gets into a stupid bet with Satan. First of all, you're omniscient and omnipotent. You don't get into bets. Don't take that. Right. Don't do bets, yes. God. But he gets <laughs> he gets like goaded into a bet with a demon. And he's like, all right, yeah, I'll let you uh, torture this guy. And we'll see if he stays Christian and faithful to me or not. Yes. And he lets yeah. Satan do that multiple times. The guy like Job passes the test and then Satan's like, let me do one more torture. And God's like, yeah, all right. Yeah, one more. Why you do one, another? One, yeah, one, no, one no. Torture. Three's the charm. Yeah. Three's the charm. And then God intervenes and cheats on the bet. He shows up and like gives a speech out of like a whirlwind or something to like remind Job that he's really there. So it, you yep. don't even get the thing of, you know, blind faith. He just like shows up. Right. And the morale of the story is, don't you fucking tell me what to do. I'm God. I'm putting a roof over your head and food in your belly. Yeah. Like he, is, he is bad guy. He is the dad from fences level of defense. Absolutely. About his weird bet. Yeah. So, but yeah, but like I said, they, they, they tell a very sanitized portion of that story. And then we like, we see he's outside later because they, can, they can't tell the whole fucking story without making it super obvious what a bad guy is. God is so they're outside later and the dad is like drilling him for clarity on the job story he's like so wait so he got his kids back at the end there he got and he's like no he got new kids different kids and he's like oh well, that's still, oh still pretty good that wouldn't matter to someone right if your whole family died you'd still <laughs> really just hope. <laughs> consider your lived experience to be a bad one right and he's like no no because job had double the kids oh Numerically? Yeah, numerically. So it's all fine. It's volume. It's all about volume. Yes. Quantity, not quality is what Job was looking <laughs> for in children. Yes. <laughs> so 
And then the dad guy is, he's like, hey, what's that tattoo on your arm? Is that significant to your exposition? He's like, well, yes, it's the symbol from the ugly necklace that we're trying to sell with this movie. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm just trying to keep track of this universe. They have half bottles of bourbon, no food except for canned beans and tattoo parlors? <laughs> yeah, well, and whatever Sean Astin is, 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 is hungry for. Yeah, a lot of good sandwich shops. Yeah, a <laughs> lot of good, a lot of food trucks in this alternate universe. Yeah, no, we're going to see one of those in a minute too. But before we do, we an air raid siren goes off. But apparently, that's just this movie's emergency alert TV tone, right? That just means go in inside and turn your TVs to channel four. Yes, which we learn in the laziest possible way. A literal little woman who we've never met before walks by and goes, "Turn your channel to four. And they're like, "Why would we?" <laughs> yeah. There's nothing. It might as well be the director in his director's chair being like, that means turn on the TV for some exposition. Right. Why would they not know that? And she know it. It makes no fucking sense. They're all residents of the same world. Anyway. And it's a message from the devil. Why would he keep the long beep in the color bars? Why wouldn't he just <laughs> fucking break into whatever channel? Yeah. So, but yeah, but the news cuts in and, and, and they're like, hey, Neil McDonough has returned and now a random group of people have to go to that restaurant from before or they will be killed. Okay. No, go ahead. No, I can't. I can't. I like, There's no, okay. okay. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> so to be clear, because I didn't want to spoil this in the first scene when we saw this happen to Kevin, what we are to believe happens on a pretty recurring basis is that the devil recruits a randomly compiled group of people into this Italian restaurant slash bar just for fucking mise-en-scene while he explains to yes. an infinite universe of Kevin's his, <laughs> his deal. Yes. And we're supposed to like, and they show up and they, what if you're too old? What if you have surgery scheduled that day? Like, I feel like the logistics of the jury do, of Kevin duty is just a nightmare. Well, and on top of that, like outside of the restaurant, there's all these groups of people trying to get in. Why don't you just take eight of them at random? It doesn't fucking matter, right? Or why not just have an empty fucking restaurant? It None of it matters. Anyway. Yeah, it's not like Tina really lent something to the experience. No, guys, I tried pitching the Kevins without feeding someone a piece of steak ominously, and the whole thing <laughs> felt silly. Okay? I had to go into the back and make myself a steak and some eggs. It was a whole thing. So, yeah, so so then we get Kevin going back to the Vika Theater, but now Russo doesn't want to let him in because the benefactor is back and he could get in trouble. So Kevin like a complete fucking douchebag meows so that Russo will think his cat's back. And then he's like, no, nah, I gotcha. I gotcha. I'm, I'm I gotcha. I'm endangering your life with my yeah. shenanigans. <laughs> what a I dick. just want to watch some peep show of my wife. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and that's it, right? He, he goes to the theater and he watches more peep show. And this time he's getting Molly like in all kinds of different, like, like first he gets like, Molly in a universe where she's a single mom with a daughter. But then he, he clicks through and we get like her doing a series of jobs as though we're walking down the Barbie aisle, right? We get like, okay, fight attendant her and teacher her. But also like really, really excited. She's like a movie star at one point. Yep. She's like mm -hmm. a very happy painter in another. She's a, a math professor, I think. And she's so much better without him. Yes. In like all these different universes. He's just be like, all right, well, I'll just stay here then because that's clearly clearly better for her in all of these. Also, I have another logistical question about the Vika theater here. OK, so a couple of times here we see he zooms in. He's got like a centipede ball on his controller. Right. And, and when he wants, he just zooms in. He just rolls the thing and it zooms in. How does it know where on the screen to zoom in? Right. He doesn't direct that. Yeah. It just zooms in on whatever he's talking about. Anyway. Yeah. Is he doing the millennial zoom? Is he doing the Gen Z zoom with the double thumbs? Right. We need a lot more answers on this instead exactly. of the 97 mouse he's got. Yeah. <laughs> it just drags the entire movie off the projector <laughs> oh, screen. Oh, God damn. No. How do I get it back? Because I can't grab Where's it the now? windows? I can't go out of the light circle. Somebody help. I'm going to force quit <laughs> the, the movie and then I'll come back to it. <laughs> So, but then, but he sees, as he's clicking through, he sees his Molly. He knows because she's wearing his ugly ass fucking necklace, right? But available at a jeweler near you. Yeah, right. Well, or, or not available at their website. Yeah. But yeah. But also, like, wouldn't the infinite universe of Molly's, like, 
wouldn't a lot of them be with the infinite universe of Kevin's? And wouldn't some of the other Kevin's have given her this necklace? Yeah, all right. the other Kevin's are busy murdering hookers. Oh, and right. Fish no, tanks. you're right. Doing prison pushups. You're right. No, that's correct. And so he's like, hey, Russo, I need you to tell me what dimension that was. He's like, oh, I can't because it's not act three yet. He's like, but come back later and I'll be able to do it. Assuming that a miracle that God miracles this back in. He's like, oh, God, will miracle in act three. Yeah, God will miracle me back into it. Wait, sorry. Are you saying that the stakes are the establishing stakes that you put into the literal second scene of this movie? Yeah, but they're immediate now. OK, they're just more immediate. I, yeah, now. it's the right. same. I want a deviator. <laughs> we end in the exact same place we started in. Yeah. Just like Christopher Nolan. <laughs> oh, it's all coming together. Huh? All right. Well, the, the movie felt the need to just set up a plot it had already set up and told us about in the opening narration. So I feel like it needs a break more than we do. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Tina, the waitress, be reunited with her family? Will Russo find his long lost cat? Will this movie mistakenly believe its audience is at all invested in either of those things? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the ludicrously gray-toned conclusion of The Shift. A lot of gray. So a lot gray. of gray. Very gray. Okay, but did you even ask them? No, man, I didn't ask. Hey, guys, wait, wait, what's going on? Eli wants me to ask the blood bank if they'll take other fluids again. Seriously, dude, this is just like the toy drive. Okay, that was on them. They were very unclear about their definition of toy. No, they weren't. I feel like we all knew what they meant. And two, two, I am trying to save money for the holidays. Well, Eli, if you're trying to save money for the holidays, why don't you try HelloFresh? What's HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Food delivered to my door? How is that going to save me money? Because HelloFresh is cheaper than takeout and with pre-proportioned ingredients, you aren't wasting money on excess food. Oh, yeah. But guys, I don't know if I have time to cook a whole meal every night. Well, if you're short on time, you can try HelloFresh's 15-minute meals. These delicious dishes are on the table in less time than it takes to get Taco Bell to the door. That does sound good, but have you guys actually tried it? Oh, I sure have. HelloFresh sent us a box to try, and I love the variety of the food as well as the fact that it unpacks in seconds. That's why I, No Illusions, personally recommend HelloFresh. All right, guys, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Just go to HelloFresh.com slash awful free and use the code awful free to get free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash awful free with the code awful free. Thanks. You sure I shouldn't call the blood bank? Yep, I am sure. But I drew a picture of what the chair would look like in everything. I don't want to see that, man. But the hoses. We see the hoses, man. We see him. Hey, Kevin. Ah, Gabe. You back for more pages? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, I did give those pages uh, a read the other night, the ones you gave me already. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it, Gabe. Uh, which ones did you read? Uh, just the, the one with the big boat. Oh, yeah, classic. The story of Noah's Ark. Right, sure. So, just to be clear, though, um, God drowned the whole world? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Except for two of every animal. Well, and seven of the clean ones. Yeah, that's right. That's right, yeah. Wow, okay. So, in the reality you come from, how many animals are there? I'm sorry? Oh, you must not even know. We have like 8.7 million different kinds of animals in this reality. So two of each of those wouldn't fit in a boat, obviously. Well, no, we, uh, well, we have the same number of animals where I'm from. Okay. Um. So am I wrong about how big the boat was? Was it like a giant, like continent sized boat for all those well, animals? No, uh, it, was, it was 450 feet. 450 feet. Well, yeah, we actually, we have a museum in my reality that explains this. Um, th they have this wall and it, it says it's really only like a thousand kinds of animals. Oh, that sounds like really fucking stupid. 
Well, but like a seal is like a water dog. Okay. <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Sean Astin grabbing a little street meat. Because, you know, <laughs> Sean Astin in a scene of this movie. Okay. This is the one time where he dropped his food and he, Sean Astin, clearly got angry in real life. 100%. Because well, you Kevin know, grabs, he's walking down the street and he's got his like falafel or whatever. And Kevin grabs him and pulls him into the, the little abandoned building and he's so fucking angry. He might as well pull a fucking another shawarma out of the air like Mitzelplik and be like, you fucking made me drop my shawarma. <laughs> and look, let's be honest. This actor did that to Sean Astin because Sean Astin was like, yeah, they just order me whatever food I want every 30 minutes yeah, right. on the minute or I leave the movie. So, yeah, but so Kevin's like, hey, shit's getting real. I need a gun. And Sean Astin's like, a gun? Those are illegal. So, And of course, this movie's intended audience gasps in horror or whatever. <laughs> and then Kevin's like, I'll stop giving you Bible pamphlets if you don't get me a gun. <laughs> and Sean Astin has to be like, yes, that does sway me now because I have to have those. Uh, here's a gun. I had one yep. the whole time. I have one right now. He says, and I quote, I'm always packing. Now, that's a silly line regardless of who delivers it, but it's extra silly coming from 50-year-old Sean Astin, right? Just yep. out of shape ass old fucking Sean and Astin. And I love, I love that Sean Astin accidentally explains how ridiculous the plot of this thing is. He's like, right. hey man, you can't just shoot the devil, the prince of darkness with a gun. I don't think that's how it works. Here's a gun though. Go to town, man. I don't know. Yep. I wrote my notes in this dumbass movie. Who knows? But you yeah. owe me a falafel. Yeah, maybe blowing out the back of Satan's skull works in this stupid multiverse model. Nothing else makes sense, and it's certainly not biblical. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but Kevin, we get Kevin arming up. He heads to the restaurant to give the devil his due. <laughs> God, that's a better line than anything in this movie. God, so much better than anything written deserve. in this movie. They're gonna steal that for their posters. Yeah, now. right. It's such right. a silly transition to the star scene. It's just like him being like. Lou, 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 off to kill the devil with a gun. <laughs> with a gun. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. Job, Job, Job. So dumb. So he gets to the restaurant, and I almost had best worst barricades, right? Because they've got like five different little barricades set up at different spots in the street, and there's five different discreet little crowds that are hiding behind those barricades, like pushing as though they want to get through, but like... You, you could just go around. Go around. There's just plenty go around. Of There's just literally. Other way. Of course, as I'm writing that, somebody tries to go around and the cops beat the shit out of him. So I'm like, okay. Well, they he, two guys get in a fight about the going around strategy and right. then the cops start to fight them. Yeah. And every single cop in the city starts fighting them and he just walks right past. <laughs> He walks into the restaurant. I have seen Assassin's Creed guards with better peripherals than this. Yeah, they start <laughs> messing with those guys. Well, I guess it's because of the fucking, it's because of their stupid ass helmets, right? Who the yeah, exactly. They're, to be fair, the they're just there. guessing at the people they're supposed to be shooting and beating up. They're doing a really good job seeing as they can't see shit. <laughs> He just holds up a tiny little fern plant next to him yeah, and right. runs across. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he, he runs across the street. He goes to go into the restaurant. But damn it, if the restaurant door doesn't teleport him back to his hotel when he walks through it. And in case grandma didn't understand that, we will have him walk back and forth through this portal for fucking time. I was laughing. I was so hard. <laughs> laughing so, yes. This was it's hilarious. so fucking funny. <laughs> Because he like, huh? huh? Okay, well, okay. I, well, I got it now. They're, they're do it all right. Sideways now, cops are on now the just my arm goes back. Yes. Okay. Uh, hmm. Okay. What about I should do bottom this half, top half, thrice shit. more? Okay. <laughs> yeah. What if I do my sandwich now? What if I sneak my butt cheeks out of the door and take a shit? Am I shitting on them? <laughs> it's on all of us. It's everywhere. <laughs> shit. So yeah. So he gets frustrated. He trashes his own home in rage for his thwarted vengeance. Then he yells at God, right? He starts demanding God explain himself. And I'm like, oh, please give us the fucking divine open the doors of his face. I wanted it so bad. Speech. Oh, my God. So bad. I was hoping for where were you when I created the whirlwind. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but that's no. the speech. That's in the book. Yes. God shows up as a whirlwind and is like, 
Oh, uh, you're going to question me? I made the fucking beginning, asshole. I beat up Leviathan. Could <laughs> you beat up Leviathan? Can you beat up a big fish? What do you mean by Leviathan? Is that like a hippo? Like a rhino? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? A water dog? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but instead, fucking Satan appears in the room. And he's like, oh, I guess it's time for me to do a bad guy monologue. And we're like, really? He pulls out his gun, and then, of course, it's Satan. So the gun just disappears from his hand and appears in Satan's hand. And he's like, did you you, you honestly thought you were going to shoot me, the devil, with a gun? What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? Karate kick. A karate kick you. Yes. <laughs> honestly, if the rest of the movie had just been him trying to surprise attack Satan, Prince of Darkness, <laughs> this might be my favorite film. <laughs> Pocket sand. Stop. I don't have eyes. This is not... <laughs> And he's like, hey, did Sean Ashton give you this gun? He's like, what? No, I, I made that gun. And, and so Satan teleports Sean Ashton into the room. Who is eating again <laughs> in the middle of you. Yep. He's yep. got a giant thing of cotton candy or whatever. And he's <laughs> like, ah, no, what? I don't even know this guy. He's, he's eating this, like an ice cream sundae. But he's <laughs> winking at both of them. Like he's trying to do double, triple, quadruple agent thing all right, at the same time. Right. Sean Ashton is. And significantly, by the way, Sean denies Kevin three times. Uh, which, like, is it from a, a different story? Yes, yes, it not, is. It's, it's from the Jesus different story. testament. It's a <laughs> biblical Easter egg so ham fisted and meaningless that the writers of the Super Mario Brothers would have told them to do better, right? <laughs> yeah, the Wool Dasher <laughs> missile is watching the movie. Seems a little obscure, man. Just sort of keep it, keep it linear. Seven new listeners every episode. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you should try a different castle. <laughs> <laughs> what I love is that in this scene, right? I don't know why Sean Astin is the like comic foil, mm -hmm. but he's so much more talented and charming than the other actors that he kind of wrecks the whole scene. Yes. Because they do this bit where he's like, hey, pick up the hotel room. And so in the back of fucking Satan monologue number 97, we've just got Sean Astin like, whoa, 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 just <laughs> slipping on banana peels and yes. eating big hot dogs and <laughs> floating over to pies by his nose. <laughs> <laughs> but outside the, so Satan finishes up his stupid monologue and outside the apartment, they hear like the the riot cops apparently are at the neighbor's house. That's the the dad that brought him in for dinner with the daughters and shit that sang. He can hear the the riot cops harassing him. So he runs outside. And he's like, don't mess with that guy. Take me. And the riot cops just shoot that dad anyway. <laughs> right away. You got it. Pat so fast. Accidentally fucking hilarious. So then they turn their guns on on Kevin. He runs back into his room, which I like. You were just turning yourself in. I don't know what, what, right. I don't really what are you doing now. Sean Astin gets shot to death because he's too dumb to duck. But luckily, Kevin hides behind a bulletproof mattress. Mm -hmm. They make those. And yeah. a good deal of cotton candy. Yeah. 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 Well, clearly. Right. Right. <laughs> he hides behind fucking Sean Astin's chocolate fountain. Yeah. Craft. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> chocolate fountain is so the best. <laughs> So yeah, so and and now okay, I have to admit I'm watching the movie, I'm looking down at my notes here and there. I how did he end up with the shifter watch at this point? Oh, I'm so excited to tell you this. Are you ready? <laughs> Noah? Yes. Yeah. Really live in this moment. He just goes and gets it. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> no. It's Sean Astin's. Oh, Sean Astin right is was the, the shifter. shifter. Yes, that's oh, right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. okay. You know how that piece of information makes the rest of this movie make absolutely no fucking sense. Right, it already didn't make sense and then it made less sense because of their stupid ass reveal, yes. Oh, but that's how he has all the food. He's in with the devil. That's right. <laughs> right. He's he just, just keeps shifting in a guy, a version of himself a that has that a is having an open air food festival <laughs> yeah. at all He's times. He's using yes. the, the devil smartwatch to just to get DoorDash the whole time. This all oh, tracks. That's, that's, yeah, okay. Now, to be fair, that is also how Heath would use a deviator. Yeah, so it's no, not like fair. that's unrealistic. Yep. That is how yeah. I use a smartwatch. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Doing it right now. So, <laughs> so, yeah, but so he's got his deviator now and he shifts out of that universe. First, he appears in a desert but then he shifts again and he appears in the lake from the beginning. Did you guys think to yourselves, hey man, give it a minute. You were in a hell dimension where there's not enough food and you have a terrible cough. Like maybe 
walk around a little bit and see what the vibe yeah. is in that universe before you just immediately shift away. Right. He just like zoops to a lake and he's like, this is wrong. Zoop. Okay, <laughs> yeah, now I'm in a room. Lake. of Nah, this is the wrong color room. Zoop. Yeah. Yeah. Just a bunch of times in a row. And he lands in a mental hospital and he's like, this is it. This is the one. I nailed it. Well, so in order to have little, right, because like it's impossible to have suspense when your character can just shift to another dimension at any fucking second, right? So they have to make the shifter like it's broken and waterlogged, so it's not working correctly. And so he tries to zoop out of this dimension, but he can't, right? So he's in this asylum. Dr. Sean Astin is in this dimension as well and recognize him. And of course, as we know, uh, Sean Astin is, of course, quote, always packing. <laughs> so he, he pulls out his gun. And then a bunch of other Sean Astons pop out to also shoot at him. He becomes Agent Smith. Yep. And yeah, but it's but it's hilarious. Five year old Sean Aston, all sweaty. <laughs> I feel like with hot dog fingers in this universe, and he's eating them, and he's yeah. supposed to be Agent <laughs> Smith, and it's so good. And they're all silly looking. Every yes. single Sean Aston, every intimidating, so-called intimidating Sean Aston is eating a different fucking cotton candy apple or whatever. Right. The Giant fuck. lollipop like a little kid. <laughs> it's so good. And that's the thing. For whatever reason, just the physicality of Sean Aston is such that the more Sean Astons are coming after you, the less intimidating they become. The Plus, funnier it is. It <laughs> also, it sets up basically a Scooby-Doo hallway chase. Quite literally. There is literally a head pokes out, head pokes in moment yes. at the dramatic finale of this film. And like, yeah, like Pac-Man style running out one side of the screen. Right, because there's the so many side. of them. Yeah, it does, it's so fucking dumb. Yeah. So, all right. At this point, I wrote in my notes, I've had this dream too. The secret is to suck all their dicks. <laughs> I don't know if you know, just a pro tip for the uh, listeners out there. Yeah. I never got the solution on that one. <laughs> yeah, I well, you know, you know, pay attention. No. <laughs> got a plan. I have to go. So, but he, he gets away from the Sean Astons. He comes into this room where Tina, remember Tina? Only because we made you remember Tina, because we <laughs> insisted that you remember Tina. Nobody watching the movie recognized this person, but this is Tina the waitress. She's in this asylum, and he, even though he's like running away from like eight armed men at this point, he's like, well, I should probably have a quick conversation with Tina. Apologize hey, for uh, right. Tina. <laughs> you remember me? Ha Sorry. Um, I was the guy who was like, I don't believe in your powers. And so he sent you to a universe where no one knows you exist. Um, <laughs> she's like, how are you? Yeah. Horrible. <laughs> I'm horrible. You're a dick. Your, your big victory didn't even help, obviously. And now I'm here in a mental hospital. It's going bad. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Bad. Question. Why is she? Because the devil teases this too. He's like, I'm sending her to a dimension where she doesn't exist. Those people end up in mental hospitals. And like, look, maybe it's because I've been on Twitter too often, but I would love to be in a dimension where no one knows I exist. <laughs> oh, don't you threaten me with a good time, Ronald DeFrancis or whatever the fuck your name is. <laughs> yeah, but so she starts freaking out. The orderlies come to grab her and... Kevin says, this is such a stupid line. He goes, hey, we're just having a conversation. I mean, who the she's, fuck? You know, she's screaming and throwing shit at you. She's, she's on the table yes. and holding you <laughs> by the ears. She's attempting to remove the ears from your skull. And he's like, we're just having a quick chat. Don't worry about this. Relax. Just let her shit in her hand. Let her finish shit in her hand. Are we not in America? I thought this is America. We don't know what she's going to do with it. Maybe she has something to show me. And <laughs> she doesn't have a pen. Give her a pen. <laughs> so then we we shift into his. Okay, so he shifts again. His his shifter starts working again. He shifts into his apartment, but a different universe version of him who is watching Netflix with two women. At, they're That's like they're both so... hugged up together with him. Guys, think about the adorableness of the writer who wrote this movie who was like, what does a bad guy do when he gets two ladies of the night over his to his place? Probably watches Black Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they all snuggle down onto the sofa and watch Wait, some... It gets even one fucking big dumber. blanket? <laughs> yeah, one big blanket. It gets even dumber than that, too. I love it so much because he's like, I'm going to go to the to the kitchen to get a drink. And as he's going to the kitchen, he comes across the other version of him that just shifted in and pulls a gun out, which means that this guy carries a gun from 
his couch watching Black Mirror to his refrigerator. Hey, look, you never know when a tickle it's fight's going to turn deadly, okay? <laughs> when it's two on one, that's a dangerous situation, Noah. <laughs> Talk about See, always this, packing. Holy shit. <laughs> always packing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> You never know. A popcorn fight, right? Someone's a stovetop yep, popcorn yep, yep. person. You're a microwave popcorn person. Oh, you yeah. might have to bust a proverbial cap. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. So, yeah, so he pulls out a gun, and he, I guess he recognizes this version of himself. Hey, wait a minute. You're the Kevin who refused. Really? Me, Kevin? <laughs> Even you are saying the Kevin who, I'm the Kevin who refused? Well, how would he recognize it? Like, all the Kevins look the same. Yeah. <laughs> And by the way, Kevin does not go, no, I'm Satan's friend. I'm here to deliver a message. He's just like, yeah, no, you got me. Yeah. You do got me. Right. So bad him is about to shoot at good him, but fucking bad guy has a has teleport powers again. You Again, you cannot have suspense when your character has a teleport wristband. Right. Why even have this scene or any more scenes in the movie? It's just like, oh, Zoop. Thank you. Zoop. Right. Now, to be fair, I would have stuck around a little bit for some popcorn and a couple episodes of Netflix. Remember, he is starving to death. I feel like I feel like you make a pit stop to be like, okay, cool. I'm a protagonist doing a different story, but can, can I just get a sandwich? I've been watching Sean Astin <laughs> eat for 90 minutes and I'm fucking starving. Right. I'm fucking starving. I'm full on Shabbat dinner at this point. Okay, I need <laughs> something. I've had bitter herbs so I feel far. like I'm at a Seder. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A single it's slice of water, apple a was given to me seven water chapters a year. That's what I've had to eat. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Brisket now. Our Jewish listener, loving that. Yeah, reference. right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Narrow cast. Both of them. Heroset. So, okay. So then he zoops back. He winds up back in the dimension where he got the wrist thingy from in the first place, right? And the EMTs are... Uh, loading the dad that got shot. They they don't want to kill that character off because this movie's a coward. So they have that dad getting loaded into an ambulance, right? And he's watching this and beggar lady. Remember at the beginning, he was doing good stuff and beggar lady gave her. Is this the lady he gave the coin to? Yeah, the coin yeah. to. Okay. Yes. And she's like, hey, there he is. Yes. She, is this she just knocks on him right <laughs> <laughs> right away. Fuck yeah. She doesn't even get a reward or anything. Yeah. No. Nope. She's like, here's the good guy, the main character over here. It's the best. Yeah. So he runs. Luckily, the, the riot cops, they chase him, but they walk while he's running. So he'll have time to get ahead. You know, they want to give him a head start. <laughs> yeah, totally obviously. They, they're doing ominous robot march because I, I think the cops in this movie were not sure if they were robots. <laughs> Right. Yeah, honestly. I wasn't either. But yeah, so he he runs to the Vika theater, right? So he needs to get <laughs> into strap down into the weird silly dentist chair. Okay. <laughs> to be clear, in his head, this character's head, he's thinking to himself, "All right, I got the Zoop watch. If I go and like point it at a movie, it'll zoop me to that timeline of the multiverse because <laughs> it saw the movie? Well, we established earlier that if he can pull his Molly up again, Russo can get the dimensional coordinates for him. Oh, the dimensional coordinates. Yeah, right. Now, that doesn't matter, though, because like Russo doesn't have a, t a chance to communicate those to Kevin before he zoops. So it still doesn't make sense. They like they, they try a hand waving explanation and miss. They try to wave their hands and they miss. But yes. Also, it's a random movie generator. Right. But but right? but God can perform miracles and make exactly the right thing come up at exactly the right time. Oh, right. The God of the universe is allowed to cheat on his bar bets. Yes. As yeah. Part exactly. of the yeah, moral of the story. Thing, yeah. But only a little bit. Yes. Just a little <laughs> cheating. OK. Take away one draft pick next year. It's fine. <laughs> but and again. No fucking suspense here, right? Because the riot cops come in and he zoops himself at the last possible second to another dimension. This this one where Molly is out shopping with her friends and he's going to go up and do like a a drunk dial, but in person. My, yeah, my, hello, hello today. Um, I oh. just want you to know. Hey, yeah. Well, I want you to know. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, there's one thing. That would ever always just, um, be you, true. You see, you see me doing the finger wine thing? Just uh, Wait, speed it up. Second. Sorry. No, here's what I'm saying. Our kid died. What? Because you weren't looking. <laughs> but that's cool. No, here's what I mean. I'm calling the Are police. Are you? Okay. <laughs> well, it, 
and the whole time there's a fucking mall cop going like, hey man, I'm pretty sure you're harassing this. Like, I was just across the room and it's so clear that she doesn't want you here that I felt the need to come up and get you to leave. Sir, I'm going to let you finish your dramatic monologue because I understand a third act when I see one, okay? I am a cinephile, but, but be assured that hands are going to be thrown as soon as you are done. Yes. You make me want to be a better man. That's what I recommend. <laughs> Yeah, but she's just like, hey, I've moved on. You've moved on. What the fuck are you even doing in this dimension? And just then the mall cop turns into Neil McDonough, Satan, and teleports Kevin back to the theater that he just teleported away from. Yeah. So, and then Satan teleports in Tina in her asylum clothes. Who? It's Tina! (laughs) Uh, You remember Tina. She, um... Well, you saw her at the beginning, and then she tried to rip off your ears, and now she's here. She's the MacGuffin. She ate a little steak and eggs. And I also can force choke her for some Apparently, reason. Apparently, but Apparently, only yes. her. Just I her. don't know why. <laughs> yes. Can I just say, hey, I really appreciate Tina's performance. No small parts. She did not fully commit to the force choke. No. Right? no. They were like, and he's force choking you, and she was like, I... I, there are some videos of me on the internet pretending to choke, and hey, I don't Tina, really want. Hey, Tina, you're seeming to enjoy. <laughs> oh, no. I don't want More the algorithm the to pick test. up those. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and of course, Satan's doing his like 97th monologue at this point. He's like, uh, you know, you go around here doing a bunch of good deeds, thinking that that makes you a good person. And I'm like, well, no, he's Christian, so no. No, he's he Christian. That's not that thing. actually. Also, I don't remember Curiously. the part where Job had to choose between Tina and his wife. Right. Well, and then he <laughs> offers his ultimatum. He's like, I'll tell you what, I will either put you back in the universe with Molly that you were just in so that you can like reconcile with her. Where or, you were slaying it, by the way. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> right, it was going right. great. <laughs> or you were weeping in front of a cinnabon. <laughs> <laughs> Or I will put Tina back and her parents will know what happened to her and she can like, uh, you know, burden them with her mental illness or whatever it is. Like, that's what he's, that's the conversation he's having. I'm not you know, trying to say a mental illness is. No, actually, burden. Noah that's, always says that when there's a mentally ill person yes, in our movies. No, but that's actually what kept it. the Satan character. <laughs> oh, God, another about. mentally ill burden. Am I right, everyone? <laughs> <laughs> no illusions. <laughs> so, so he's having trouble deciding for a second, mm-hmm. but I think a cat-related thing happens and it yes. helps him decide. Fuck yeah. So, so Satan brings up the problem of evil. He's like, if your God is so good, why is there evil in the universe? And just then, Russo's cat shows up. Now, they're indoors, right? Like, they, they're not outside, but so who the fuck knows where the cat came from? But the cat's back, and that makes Kevin realize that there's also good in the world, which is easier to see because of all the bad, and <laughs> therefore, problem of evil solved. Sorry, <laughs> did the devil just to do a tiny little, like, I'm going to put this cat into a different universe to fuck with? Russo, or did God do that? So I think God, did God. That, that, that was God reaching down. So God stole a cat for like at least <laughs> yes, four, for four years. fucking years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what was that cat doing the whole time? Just hanging out, just clawing at clouds, walking around. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's in robes, so you know he has plenty of places to play. Just yeah. knocking mm-hmm. shit off the counter in heaven. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I would let you sit at my right hand like I promised, but Mittens is there. You don't even see him come. come. He's just suddenly he's under your hand. You can sit second to right hand. Don't try to pet him. He's one of those <laughs> cats that kind of <laughs> sucks. But I like him, and he... Knows I'm in the house. It goes good for a second, the petting. <laughs> it does. It's good. It's a trap, though. Look at the little Pete's. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and now look at the little Pete's on Tina. So, okay. Or are you a big Pete person? Like he's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, listeners, that's probably a callback to something I cut from earlier in the no, show. I don't I will know. Sta- <laughs> Noah, I will stand behind you with a sword like you're committing seppuku. Yog, Pete. Stays in there. So, yeah. Uncut. Raw. <laughs> but apparently, th- this movie feels like it's just nailed the problem of evil. Good is easier to see against a backdrop of bad, which is a sufficient reason for God to murder babies with cancer. Right? Yeah. So then Kevin decides ultimately that he'll send Tina back instead of getting what he wants because of his infinite goodness. (laughs) 
And then the devil freaks out because he didn't see that coming. And he's like, fuck, seriously? You're, ah, oh, you're the worst. Where's my devil gun? And he doesn't have <laughs> a gun. So he's like, I got to zoop Sean, Sean Astin, Astin in here. <laughs> and he zoops Sean Astin in to grab a gun. Well, because Sean Astin's always packing. Yeah. Always packing. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, he's there with a lobster bib, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Some crab crackers. Oh, did you need a gun? Yeah, sure. Here you go. <laughs> Do you mind putting me back? They're doing. Uh, I was in a universe where they're doing unlimited shrimp <laughs> at, uh, at. Yeah, no, at Red Lobster. So they're, they're still doing a ton the shrimp, of money on the deal. Shrimp apparently. fiesta. We are. So, I got sick. I am very <laughs> sick. <laughs> so yeah. So Satan goes to shoot him, but just then God holy lights him away. Right. <laughs> And then we Job quote our way into him coming to <clears throat> on the floor of a bar bathroom. But don't worry, it's a classy bar. <laughs> Heath yeah. gets it. Heath gets it. Well, yeah, <laughs> the walls aren't all fucked up and everything's mm -hmm. not gray or sepia. And he's like, oh, am I in <laughs> somewhere good, maybe? Yeah. And he walks out and he sees Molly at the bar. At the bar where they met. Now, this movie had an opportunity for some genuine good humor here, right? Because he comes up thinking it's his Molly and he tries to do an inside joke, but it's not his Molly. This is a Molly that's never met him in some other dimension. And that would have actually been funny, except that they had this actress for reasons that we are not privy to openly weeping at the bar like she like someone yeah. she loved just died. They don't explain why it's it. I think it's just there to undercut the humor of the moment. Yeah, it never gets explained. She just like at one point she mentions that she's a nurse in this scene. But like, I think that was supposed to be the explanation. She's like, I'm a nurse. Oh, yeah, sure. So you come to a bar and to weep, weep for a couple hours. Yeah, after your right, shift. Right. I get Clearly. it. Yeah. So it's 2020 in this. I dimension. Her, when he walks up, I wanted her to be like, do you just take a shit for a while and then come right over to me? From the bathroom? <laughs> yeah. Well, he woke up on a bathroom floor. How is this guy going to smell? I, I, yeah. Um, but yeah, but apparently this is the universe where she's a single mom with a daughter that he saw earlier. Daughter, replacement kid, just there as you good. Go. And just then her daughter calls her on her cell phone because before she goes to bed tonight, she wants to hear mom sing this little light of mine. Right. That's a callback. Which would be cute, except she's in the middle of rejecting him. She's like, hey. I don't know what you think. Sorry, one second. Oh, you're, you're going to take and the phone And the poopsie okay. spoopsie spider goes <laughs> dancing on the flower. <laughs> Anyways, I don't want to fuck you. Right, yeah. <laughs> and so it, she gets off the phone and he's like, oh, you know, our son, or <clears throat> my son's name was Daniel, but he's dead. Your kid's alive. That sounds way better. And she's like, no, it is better. It is better. I bet you got one of those kid leashes for her, huh? <laughs> Just, you know, can't help but notice that you were a little more careful with the daughter than you would be with the son. <laughs> okay, but just to be clear. Oh, I need someone to do my shopping with. <laughs> just to be clear, God sent him to a timeline where his son is still stolen and killed. Yes! And he's aware of it. Well, no, his son doesn't exist. To be fair, his son doesn't exist. This is their meat cute. He talks about missing. He says it again in this universe. Right. In the other dimension. Yeah, right. He just gives up on his son who has just been bamfed to a random dimension and exiled to insanity. We never go no. back to that because fucking... He got fucked to death by a pedophile and that's why Satan can't get him. It's very clear. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's much better. Thank you. And Eli. God made sure to implant that information into Kevin's head for this universe, though. So he yeah, knows all oh, of yes. that. Right, right. So he knows not to keep looking. Yeah, but so he offers to buy Molly tea. And then we flash forward to them being married and happy and him having a unofficial stepdad relationship with her child. <laughs> so. Really wanted them to flash cut to them in bed for the first time. And she's like, I'm really into pee stuff. And he just starts rapidly tapping at the deviator. No, no. <laughs> I'll go back to the universe with the beans. <laughs> <laughs> also, so no, I have so many logistical questions, right? Because he just appeared in this dimension. This is not his dimension. So isn't there a, a him already in that dimension? Great question. And if not, like he, he doesn't have a driver's license. He doesn't have a social security number. He doesn't have a home, a job. Like what's going on? Like, I want to see that part of the movie. Just every so often he has to murder another one of himself that keeps happening. From the right. <laughs> His grandma starts to talk about a memory. He's got to shoot her in the face. God damn, it's really hard <laughs> to stay consistent. <laughs> damn. But yeah, but now he's married, uh, lives happily ever after. The closing line of the movie is he goes, 
this is not my world, but it is my home. And I'm like, yeah, close on something relatable, guys. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> How fucking terrifying an insight into someone's mind is it that it's like, well, I guess a happy ending would be to like not spend the rest of your life with the woman and child you love, but things that look close enough to them. Yes, right. Yes, but similar <laughs> analogs. of You'd be cool sort. with that, right, Noah? If you knew that you were banished to a universe where the woman you were now married to wasn't the woman you knew and fell in love with, but looked like her. Yeah, right, but right. Kinda, you just totally you'd be different. like, sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah, no, this is the even, even money. <laughs> Normal. Okay, and then, of course, the credit story. Now, this is from Angel Studios, the, the, the people who brought us Sounds of Freedom and shit. So, obviously, there's going to be a part at the end now where the director comes in and tries to talk us into buying more tickets for the movie we just watched. Mm -hmm. Right? I didn't watch this part, and here's why. Because at the very bottom, it says... You know, special announcement in, and then there's like a, a, a timer. Two-minute countdown. It was rough. Okay, so here's the thing is that in my theater, the t the actual countdown was cut off on, at the bottom of the screen. So all I saw was special message and then there was a, a, a colon. And I just sat there for like a minute and a half going like, it takes too long. I know what he's going to say. Too much. He's going to try to tell me to buy more fucking tickets. I can see the fucking barren wasteland of empty seats around me. I know you need more money, but fuck you. And so I okay. just wrote. He asks for more money, and then I... Left. Oh, he sure does. It's worse he than sure that, does. though. Is it? So he, he comes on the screen, and he's like, so this whole movie, the moral of the story, the moral of the story of Job and what we did here, the point is doing a small kindness for a, a poor person, for example, is the moral. That's what you can... You can do that all over the place. For example... Ah! Buying a poor person a movie Buying ticket, them a ticket to this, to this movie. movie. This movie. Pay it forward in... This movie tickets. Oh, yeah. that's so bad. That's so bad for so many reasons, not the least of which is that that is not the moral of either this movie or the book of or Job. Or the story no. of Job. No, it is not. <laughs> but it did give me a brilliant idea, podcast listener, because one of the things that we have always struggled with here in God Awful Movies is not wanting to give our movie makers money for their terrible things. So please go to the Angel Studios website and sign up to be their free ticket recipients because nothing makes me happier than the idea of everyone who gets a free ticket to their future endeavors being our <laughs> listeners. <laughs> I definitely blocked a few Sound of Freedoms. I'll do it again with this one too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. No, fuck yeah. Get it out there. All right. Well, I guess that's going to do it for our review of The Ship, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to turn back into this storm. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, we are well into what was supposed to be this year's christmas tacular. I had a lovely pro-child abuse Christmas mu movie planned for us next week. Oh, Jesus. But then... A klaxon sounded. Didn't it, An though? alarm rang and our wrist communicators buzzed as the stars vanished from the sky because Ben Shapiro has made a transphobic comedy called Lady Ballers. Oh, God damn. And I'll be damned yep. if I'm not going to be the first to tell everyone it sucks. All right. Yeah. So, and we have to. I get it. I don't want to, but we have to. So, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 432 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to get yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn only access to an ad free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, DNA Minus, and The Skeptic Guide, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or send a message suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnik of Drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bostick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Tina has really bad PTSD, and the secret Christian kids don't have a dad. Yeah. Sean Aston wondered why the fuck there wasn't a Goonies 2 already. Kevin wasn't so fucking careless with his second set of kids. <laughs> Get a backpack. Jesus, idiot. <laughs> I'm just saying. Nope. Get an apple pack. The 
The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. When you save on auto insurance for driving safe with USAA SafePilot, you'll feel like a big deal. Even in a traffic jam. Save up to 30% with USAA SafePilot. Restrictions apply. What makes an occasion special? Does it have to involve a birthday, anniversary, or promotion? Or can it be that first juicy bite of a perfectly cooked burger, shared over laughs with good friends on a warm summer night? Sounds pretty special to us. Together, we bring more. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Funded by Beef Farmers and Ranchers.